humans and chimps share 98.8% of their DNA. They are our closest relatives, and we share more DNA with them than any other great ape. Researchers have just announced that an all-out tour has been observed between a group of chimpanzees and gorillas. Something that's quite surprising is these two groups have never been seen doing this before. It's a first, and something that researchers have said is that it's really sad. The incident happened in the Luongo National Park back in 2019, with the study going on to report that it happened more than once. Those who were close by when it happened reported that it was the chimpanzees who first attacked, saying that they outnumbered the gorillas. Researchers who gathered data from the attack said that it was strange that this happened, and that they're working to get to the bottom of why both the chimps and gorillas were much more aggressive than normal. Both times an infant gorilla passed away due to injuries. A new study that's looking at the fighting between the two is being carried out by researchers who are on the scene, with them saying that although the aggression is strange, and that it hasn't been seen before, they have some theories for why this may have happened, which include the two groups being territorial, or competing for food sources. Tobias Densher from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany said the following, Our observations provide the first evidence that the presence of chimpanzees can have a lethal impact on gorillas. We now want to investigate the factors triggering these surprisingly aggressive interactions. End quote. We are constantly learning more and more about chimpanzees, but one thing that researchers have noticed is that when pushed they can be very aggressive, and will even take on humans if they stand in their way. This has been demonstrated in areas around Uganda, which are losing their habitat, and some wildlife experts have said that the chimpanzees know who is responsible. They've observed humans pulling down the local forests, and they've said that it's angered the chimps so much that they've decided to spark a conflict between humans and apes. The researchers observing the chimps have said that it's almost as if they've had enough, and that they've been observed watching humans from a distance while they tear down the forest. One of the first incidents was recorded when the chimps were seen near the forest, and heading towards the nearby crops. Due to their habitat loss, the chimps were able to come much closer to the edge of the forest, and see where the humans would return. Scouts were then said to follow some of the humans back, and this is where they found the nearby crops. Once they found this, the group was called in and they started to raid the area. The group were able to take plenty of crops for themselves, and even attack the humans. This bold move was successful, and it only gave the chimps more confidence. This, along with other traits, has made experts put forward the theory that chimps won't back down from a conflict, especially if they know that they're getting something out of it. The incident in Luango happened back in February of 2019, and it involved a group of 18 chimpanzees and 5 gorillas. The incident happened when the two were passing into each other's territories, with the battle lasting just under an hour. The next meeting between the two groups happened in December 2019, and it lasted an hour and 20 minutes. This happened because a chimpanzee encountered a gorilla while it was doing a border patrol. Those who witnessed the event said that because the chimps outnumbered the gorillas, they were able to separate an adult female gorilla from its infant, which eventually led to it losing its life. The other gorillas were able to retreat, but it's noted that the chimpanzees did also sustain various injuries. The wildlife experts said it was sad to see the two groups fight, and that as of right now they're working to better understand what could have caused this encounter to escalate. Tobias said the following, It could be that sharing of food resources by chimpanzees, gorillas and forest elephants in the Loango National Park resulted in increased competition, and sometimes even in lethal interactions between the two great ape species. Simon Picker from Germany said the following, We are only at the beginning to understand the effects of the competition on interactions between the two great ape species. Our study shows that there is still a lot to explore and discover about our closest living relatives, 
and that Luango National Park with its unique mosaic habitat is a unique place to do so. End quote. The research on the two groups was published in scientific reports. The battle between a silverback gorilla and a chimpanzee would normally go one way, and that would be in favour of the large silverback gorilla. Gorillas are also the world's largest primates, but working out how strong they are is difficult. Many sites report that a gorilla can lift from 4 to 30 tons their body weight, but wildlife experts have said this number is closer to 10 to 15 tons their body weight. They also have one of the strongest bite forces in the animal kingdom, but this doesn't come down to their teeth, but rather the massive neck muscles. The average weight of a gorilla is 140 kilograms, but they can weigh up to 267. When compared to that of an adult lion, it's estimated that a silverback gorilla is over four times as strong. Its bite force is also twice that of a lion's. The difference between a chimpanzee and a gorilla is that the much larger gorilla is actually much more calm, and the chimp is much more unpredictable. Gorillas have shown great sophistication when they're in the wild, but chimps seem to be more intelligent. The researchers have said that it's likely that this battle in the Loango National Park will continue all the time the two groups are encountering each other. Bigfoot is one of the most interesting cryptids out there, perhaps because it's the one cryptid that most resembles us. For years now people have been coming forward with their encounters with these elusive creatures, being able to provide photographic evidence along with casts of footprints. However, it's also known for causing interesting discussions. Some think that the humanoid exists in small groups, while others have said it's not possible that such a large humanoid could exist in our world without being seen more frequently. They point to the fact there would need to be a large group of them to survive, and if this was the case they'd be seen a lot more often. Others, however, disagree with this notion and have said that for thousands of years man has been encountering these giants, with reports coming from Tibet, America and even Australia. However, some people take it a step further, and claim that they've managed to interact with these creatures. One of these is a 70-year-old woman, who's detailed that she's been communicating with and raising a Bigfoot for almost a decade. Her incredible story details that she's raised the baby Bigfoot since it was young, and that she's even managed to teach it a few words. The woman said she can back up her story with photographs and videos, but as of right now has decided not to release these. She first encountered the Bigfoot back in 1964 in a swamp in Louisiana, saying that the creature was weak and only weighed roughly 20 pounds. She then thought that if she didn't do anything the creature might pass away. Wanting to avoid this she took the baby Bigfoot home, and started to raise it. When she got home she fed the Bigfoot, saying that its favourite food was eggs, tomatoes and goat's milk. After a couple of meals and getting the creature back on his feet, she said she released it back into the wild where it belonged. However, every time she did this she said it refused to leave, and would always find its way back to her. Over the next eight years, she continued to raise and feed the animal, but said when it reached adulthood she moved away. In 1974 she moved into a nearby town, and said she had to leave the creatures behind, something she said wasn't easy. She said the following about the whole experience. He was so little and so cute. I had to do something about it. He was so defenseless, lying next to the mud and water curled up crying like a baby. His parents either passed away or had abandoned him. He brought a friend home with him. At first the other guy was shy hiding behind the bushes, but little by little he began to trust me. So there we were sitting on my porch, two Bigfoots and I having dinner under the moon. Bigfoots are real and they happen to be excellent creatures, docile and better than most people, and by the way they don't smell bad like some people say. I've given you a story, tell it, that's all I want. 
Only another person besides you knows my secret now, and that's my friend Maggie. It's an interesting story, but as with most of these, certain questions will be put forward. You have to provide evidence when it comes to these sorts of claims, as although they make for great stories, we need to see evidence to back up what's being said. However, even some people within the science community have come forward and said that we shouldn't dismiss these sightings. One question that's been put forward is does forensic science back up Bigfoot claims? Jeff Meldrum, Professor of Autonomy and Anthropology at the Idaho State University, have said he thinks it does, and who better to believe than an expert in the evolutionary morphology, that is the study of how primates adapted to bipedalism. In his research, Meldrum studies footprints to determine how humans have evolved for upright walking. He studies samples from Africa, as well as other places all around the world. Meldrum attributes his interest in Bigfoot to a track he discovered in southeastern Washington. It was here he says he found a fresh track, so fresh he could see the skin ridges in detail. The print was at least 14 inches long. That first sighting was over 20 years ago. Since then, Meldrum has studied over 300 footprints, as well as hundreds of photos of Bigfoot. When describing these cars, Meldrum said the feet are broader and flatter than humans. He also noted the lack of an arch and thumb like a big toe that would be similar to an Ames. Instead, there was a big toe more like a human's. The toes were longer, presumably to help navigate the uneven terrain. Furthermore, based on the imprint, Meldrum believed the print couldn't have been manufactured as some have said. The print is pressed into the ground in such a way that it shows flexibility. He noted that these prints are usually adapted to allow large primates to walk on two legs. To Meldrum, this evidence is proof that Bigfoot may exist, and it would be ridiculous to simply discount his evidence. Meldrum doesn't simply believe in Bigfoot, he is certain the creatures exist. Other researchers have pointed out that large humanoid creatures have been reported for at least the last 10,000 years, saying that ancient man has detailed their encounter with what they say are large humans. Going back, old tales in Australia said the Yowie were the original inhabitants of the Australian continent but were completely driven out of their native lands by the men that came there to settle. However, every so often eyewitness accounts come from Australia, detailing that they've seen what looks like a Bigfoot creature. Going down the Yowie rabbit hole leads to further theories, from Australian government officials covering up further evidence, to Yowies being involved in many of the extraterrestrial and unidentified flying object sightings all around Australia. There's even subgroups of the Yowie community that defend the idea that Yowie might be an alien species, and that the Bigfoot monsters and variations could all be extraterrestrial species. The Yowie creature is commonly encountered in Queensland, with many of the eyewitnesses saying this creature is unlike anything they've seen before. The dense jungle regions of our planet are some of the most mysterious, mainly because there's still so much of it that's never been explored by humans. The jungle and oceans of our planet hold many interesting discoveries. In recent years, the reports of these have made their way online, and one of the most interesting ones involves those of supposed giant snakes. There's currently disputes among animal researchers as to which snake holds the title of being the longest. According to the Natural History Museum, Green anacondas have been reported to reach lengths of up to 8.43 meters and having a girth of 1.1 meters. They note though that generally the reticulated python is longer. Regardless, it's thought that both of these hold the titles being the largest. However, when reading testimonies online, this size starts to get questioned, as various early explorers have gone on to note that they've encountered massive snakes that dwarf these sizes. Reports of giant snakes are not anything new. Some of the earliest reports come from South America and say that snakes here can reach between 40 and 60 feet in length. Due to these snakes being sighted in South America, 
It led to these explorers suggesting that what they were seeing were gigantic sized anacondas. One of the problems was during these times it was hard to verify what was being seen. The only thing that can back up what the men saw are notes and passed down stories. However, tribes across the world have backed up these stories and said that giant snakes do exist. One encounter with these giant snakes was said to have happened during the 1940s when army officials ran into an abnormally large snake. The encounter happened somewhere in Brazil. The report states that one of the team members called over the others as they saw a mysterious creature close to a bank. The team then went over to investigate and noticed the snake had passed away, which gave them the perfect opportunity to measure it. One thing they noticed was that this wasn't any ordinary snake, saying that after the measurements were taken this snake measured in at 12.4 metres, or just over 40 feet. What happened to this snake is unknown. Another story was shared by Lee Kreisdeck, who was on a 1944 petroleum expedition in Colombia and claimed to have measured an 11.4 metre or 38 foot specimen. However, noting that other than his story, there's no way to back up what happened. Another famous account of giant snakes is those told by the famous explorer Percy Fawcett. Before Percy even began visiting these regions, he caught word of giant creatures that allegedly lived in the jungles of our world. Natives of the Amazon reported seeing large serpent-like creatures, and would often try to avoid them at all costs, as every time they got close or tried to stop them they would be eaten. Percy was allegedly able to track down some villagers, but said they didn't like the idea of tracking down one of these giant snakes, saying that if one was spotted close to their village, Instead of trying to get rid of it, they would just leave the area. Percy Fawcett went on to detail his encounter with the giant snake. He said the following, We were drifting easily along the slow current, when almost under the above the boat there appeared to be a triangular head. It was a giant anaconda. I sprang for my rifle as the creature began to make its way up the bank. My guides were scared for their life, but I managed to persuade them to turn towards the shore. These giant creatures are known to tip boats and everyone was worried that this was going to be our fate. We stepped ashore and approached the reptile with caution. It was out of action, but shivers ran up and down the body like puffs of wind on a mountain tarn. As far as it was possible to measure, a length of 45 feet lay out of the water, and 17 feet in it making a total length of 62 feet. Its body was not thick for such a colossal length, no more than 12 inches in diameter, but it had probably been long without food. I tried to take a piece of the skin but the creature was still alive. End quote. Percy managed to escape and report the encounter. Locals came forward and backed up his claims, saying that other large snakes had been encountered in the area. Something interesting to note though is that these claims have been debunked by scientists, and around the same time he went on to claim that he discovered a new breed of dog, and that this dog had two noses. These reports were debunked and said to be pure fantasy, but it turns out that Percy Fawcett was telling the truth. The double-nosed Andean tiger hound is an extremely rare breed of dog, and people use this as an example of Percy telling the truth. People never believe that the dog existed, but it does. So believers in giant snakes have said that perhaps he was telling the truth, but it's just we haven't yet found one. One of the most giant land creatures of the ancient world, that according to some people still resides deep in the jungles of the Amazon rainforest, is that of the Titanoboa. Scientists have found ancient fossils of Titanoboa, that indicate this massive snake could grow to a length of 42 feet. According to researchers, the fossils of Titanoboa are around 60 million years old. However, many local people from the native tribes claim to have seen the monstrous snake in various parts of the Amazon rainforest. Scientists believe that the vast unexplored jungles of the Amazon rainforest are home to many undiscovered species, and Titanoboa could be one of them. The Amazon is so dense that sunlight is unable to reach 95% of the soil in the rainforest. 
Moreover, there are many places in the Amazon rainforest where flash floods happen. Some native tribes still believe this monstrous snake lives near the waterways in the Amazon rainforest. There are many people belonging to the native tribes in the Amazon, and its surrounding areas who claim to have seen a Titanoboa. Some animal experts have dismissed these sightings. They are of the opinion that it's possible that many of these sightings were actually sightings of large snakes like Anaconda. The only other explanation that exists to explain away these encounters is that every person is overestimating the sizes of these snakes. Something that could happen is when these creatures are up close they can appear larger than what they actually are. Cryptid researchers though believe that giant snakes do still live on our planet. So what do you make of these interesting stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.